In this video, I'm gonna go through the minimum requirements for room heights in residential buildings in Australia. What you'll find, there's only pretty much two measurements you gotta go off. For habitable rooms, 2.4, everything else, 2.1. The best way to think of a habitable room is any room in your house where someone will be in for the longest amount of time. So when, for example, bedrooms, people will be sleeping there, living rooms, people will be hanging out there. So there's a nice long list of habitable rooms to go through, which include bedrooms, living rooms, lounge rooms, music rooms, television rooms, dining rooms, sewing rooms, studies, family rooms, home theatre, and sunrooms. So kitchens are habitable rooms too, but for the sake of the room height, it's not classified as the same height needed as the rest of the habitable room. So for in the kitchen's sake, it only needs to be 2.1 metres, where the rest of these habitable rooms are 2.4. So the list of all the other rooms that will require that 2.1 metres rather than the 2.4 include hallways, bathrooms, shower rooms, laundry, sanitary compartments, airlocks, storerooms, garage, car parking area. So a big thing you'll find coming in renovations, you'll be lifting up your house and you'll be wanting to build underneath and you want to make sure you get that 2.4, but sometimes you'll have bulkheads because of steel beams and joists. So in that sense, you, as long as you have two thirds of your ceiling spaces at 2.4 meters, then that will be, you'll be all good to go. Now, as an idea for how much two thirds is, if you have a 20 meter squared area, 13.3333 recurring meters squared of that area, as long as that's 2.4 from your finished floor to your finish of your ceiling, then you're all good. So it's the same case for all of your non-habitable rooms that have to be at 2.1 meters. If you have beams and joists in the way, as long as two thirds of that area goes to 2.1 meters, you'll be all good. Now, you, where you actually take those measurements will be at the absolute final stage of when you've got your finished ceiling lining done and your finished floor, and it's from the actual top of the finished floor to the underside of your ceiling lining. So that means, and then as well, if you've got a little bit of discrepancy, if your floor's out like that, your ceiling's out like that, it's just gonna be wherever the minimum is. So you, whenever you're building, you always wanna make sure you're giving yourself an extra 20, 30 mil, because you never wanna push that limit. Now there is an exception to the rule. When you come up into attic spaces, and an attic space is an area in your roof space that will be above your ceiling joists, and then more likely than not, you'll have rafters rather than trusses, so it will create an attic space. Now in this attic space, your habitable room, as long as two thirds of it is at 2.2 meters, then you've got the all clear. Now that 2.2 meters will actually only begin from where 1.5 meters in height from your finished floor to the pitch of your um, rafter, from that space all the way to the other side where it goes to 1.5 meters. Now there'll be one more measurement that you gotta look out for for when it comes to room heights is that when you have a set of stairs coming down and then you have another ceiling coming in, that point of the nosing to that point of the ceiling has to be at minimum of two meters. Thanks for watching and I hope I was able to provide some information for you and I'll catch you on the next one.